big fish, big fish. Hey, big fish, I got him. Got a big one. Oh, big fish, big fish. Good morning, everybody. You know, another beautiful day out here in Costa Rica. Today is a little bit more of a late day. Swell is definitely dying down a little bit. You know, you know, there's really much waves to be had, so I think today might be a great day to take out the spear gear. We're bringing out shortboards just in case. You know, we really don't know in some of the areas. Hey, it might be really good. Uh, but we got spear gear, we got surfing gear, we have fishing gear. I think we're ready for a true Costa Rican adventure today. Wait. Smaller than yesterday, but you always can get a surprise. <laughs> wow, the tide got super low. Because you see the reef, but there is a secondary reef that is a little deeper. That you did, that we didn't see it in high tide, so maybe the fish that is not in the reef. I'm going over there now. I'm going to move a little deeper. Let's let's go first to the fishing place, and then we will go from there. Go where? Try to see uh, the fishing store to see like we can get some line from you and. Maybe we can get some tips there because for fishing I don't know very good this area. So hopefully they give us some some, some advices. Every, everywhere in everywhere in Costa Rica, every beach town, we got the fishing the fish community, the fishing guys community. And I am both surfing and fishing. <laughs> fishing has deep roots within Costa Rican culture and in Early's life. When he was younger. He would work on a commercial fishing boat with his dad, making a living during the summer months when he was off from school. Early and his dad would target the plethora of fish off the coast, even catching a 700 pound black marlin. What did you end up doing with that 700 pound black marlin? Man, no, that was my fishing the boat, the boat for my, the boat for my dad fishing. I mean, it was not a sport fishing. He was, It was part of the tons of fish that we catch. Great money. Dude. How's that burn feeling? Oh my god, dude. It's like sandpaper on my back. Anything that touches it in the backpack already feels like really rough. So it's like excruciating. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, dude. It hurts. Hopefully the uh, water will make it feel better, but I it's looking small, but looking prime for, for spear and, and, uh, and surf fishing. So, it looks crystal clear. Got to have a great day at the beach. Man, you can... I feel like you can shoot a well with this thing. <laughs> Here it is. Really clear water right now, huh? There's no way. I'm not good. Man, the water is so clear. All right, visibility is looking insanely clear at the moment, so we're gonna try to give it a shot going spear fishing. Um, try to see if we can't catch some big fish. New spot, new place, new fish. Excited to try it. We gotta go through a little sandy section, then through the channel, and then we'll be out by the reef. Making it through the shallow channel, we hit the deeper reef and begin looking for fish. I decide to focus my attention on the rocky outcroppings and the channels next to them, since it creates a highway for bigger fish to travel through. Once I see this eagle ray, I know I'm in a fishy spot. All of a sudden, out of the deep blue, a monster comes towards me. I've managed to land a good holding shot on the fish, but unfortunately I missed the spine and now the fish is tearing through the water, dragging me along with it. Slowly but surely, I bring the fish in closer and secure my spear, but I still have one problem ahead of me. Without my knife, I am unable to land a killing blow on this fish. 
And with a local's warning of a tiger shark that lurks this reef, I am getting worried that the fish will bring in a bigger predator. The fish still has plenty of fight left in it, but each run isn't dragging me as far. So I come up with a plan to end the fight. I got an idea. I'll try to stab it in the head and kill it with the, with the spear so we don't have to drag it in, okay? Battling the fish in the shallows, I finally have an advantage over the fish. I can tell that the fish is tuckered out and it's time for me to land the killing blow. <laughs> and just like that, the fight is over and I have secured dinner for the table. Oh my god! Oh my god. I look over and there's something right next to me looking at me. I'm like, oh shit! Line up a shot, poof, nail it, dude! Big oh. fish! It's big! Yeah! <laughs> 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 He wants to catch it, I'm just carrying it. <laughs> Teamwork, you help me. You help me. I'm just a helper. I can't believe that. I was literally, so I went in this like gully and I dove down and I look and it's four feet away from me. And it's just staring at me. I'm like, go for on, go for on. Too late, I don't know if it's on, but I'm going to shoot this thing and nail it, dude. You weren't even out there that long. Mm -hmm. So how, how, do we, how are we going to take care of this fish without well, any ice? There's no ice, right? Well, let's do it Costa Rican style, just bury him under the wet sand and then it's going to be good for the next three hours. Yeah. So let's see. Oh yeah, the sand's cold. It's already colder down there. Without ice or a cooler, Early teaches me a trick Costa Ricans use to keep a fish cold. By burying the fish to where the sand turns wet, the ocean water will naturally keep the fish cold while the sand protects it from the scorching sun, allowing us to continue diving. Just bury it. It'll keep it cold. Keep the of the fish. I think that's the first time I've ever done like a fish coffin refrigeration system. <laughs> that's really cool though, because like we go yeah, to places can, too where you don't have ice. Yeah, you can bury it right there in the middle of the sun. If you can bury it, it off. Yeah. You will get it cold. Because it's already like 10 degrees cooler down there. It's cold. Cool. Yeah. Mark it. Cool. Little one. Oh, no one yeah. No one out there. Small though. I think yeah, we're going to head back out. Way. We got the one fish, but the guy was saying, local guy was saying, there's the same area we're at as a bunch of lobsters, so we're gonna try to do a little lobster fish dinner now. Uh, uh, finger fish and lobster. Let's get it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my adrenaline's pumping right now still. This time though, Pat pointed out that I'm an idiot and I could have easily just clipped my freaking knife to my belt so I could have had it out with me, but you know what? After hearing that crazy shark story on the beach, I think I was just happy to bring it in at the moment and stab it, but let's give this another go, see what we can catch. This time, Early and I are exploring a section of reef that we pass by on our way in that's loaded with reef fish and potential caves for lobster. This reef is blowing me away with countless new species and the sheer amount of biomass on it. I find myself taking this time to actively explore the reef without actively hunting, since I know I have enough fish for dinner. On the tops of the rocky outcroppings, where it's shallow enough for waves to break, schools of chub dance around the white water. I see a nice looking ledge under this rock and go and check it for lobsters, and in doing so, scare away this really cool looking puffer fish. Finally, I see a ledge with antenna sticking out of it, so I make my drop to go explore. 
I can tell that there are a couple lobsters hiding deep in there, but when I go and take a closer look, I can see that they're not quite big enough to eat. With the tide dropping fast, swell is starting to impact a lot of these places that we are diving. Big schools of chub begin to move in with the swell, and I'm just mesmerized they swim all around me. I feel like when the tide gets bigger, the surf's getting bigger, like more waves coming through. Yeah, look like Well, that time around, I saw a lot of fish. And a lot of fish I wanted to shoot. But I was like, wait a minute. One big fish is good enough, dude. That's so much food. I was talking about the three different kind of uh, jacks. Jack, Pampano, or what was the name that you said? It was? Giant Trevally. Giant Trevally. For the Costa Rica, it is all Purel. Purel. Good for good for sea soup, but no, no like a best quality like a, to do like a ceviche, no, no way. Okay. But maybe chicken fingers, but Fried not fish. the best quality of fish mm. for, for, for eat. For eating. Because uh, oily, right? He said it was oily? Oily, oily. Like a little bit oily. When you cook it, it's a little bit like oily. Mm -hmm. Oh, no way. Rooster fish, rooster fish is oily too? Yeah. The, the, older, the older they get, the oily they go. The, the, the baby ones, the little rooster, good. But no one wants to eat those because you want to have, a, you want to keep it, catch and release the baby ones. Yeah. So it's like keep the, the satisfaction of the fight is later. Yeah. yeah, it's really cold. I'm trying to find a tail. Um, let's grab my knife. Damn, just like that, you can't even tell we had this thing buried for like two hours. It's cold. The fish is cold. Yeah. It looks like a used catch Yeah. Let's gut this thing open. Get it ready to take home. Well, do you see every that doc documentary where this is a... Uh, did something like this, they eat birds, and they have like a big mouth. Uh -huh. For me, just like that, but I don't GT. know It's a giant trevally. When? I think the giant trevally's have bigger fins. Well, you well look it up. Okay, this one is a little bit like... Stunty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's big. <laughs> After doing some research, we discover that this is actually a giant African pompano. And unlike the urel that Early is talking about, this meat is highly sought after and delicious. No, but it's good. Yo, anything that is white meat is it's good meat. That's the thing that's pampano. Yeah, this is good, really good. To celebrate, Ugo, a local chef, has decided to show us how to make Costa Rican ceviche. Primero que todo, número uno, vamos a cortar el pescado en pequeños cuadros, cubos, cortado en cubitos, lo incorporamos en un bol. Posteriormente le agregamos sal, agua y lo dejamos reposar por 20 minutos. Mientras está en reposo por 20 minutos, exprimimos el jugo de limón aparte, picamos la cebolla, el chile dulce, la maracuyá. La maracuyá la combinamos, perdón, primero picamos la cebolla, el chile dulce, El culantro todo por aparte. Luego exprimimos el limón y le incorporamos el jugo de las maracuyá sin las semillas. Sí, sin las semillas. Ok, lo dejamos reposar el jugo de limón. Cuando ya tiene 20 minutos el pescado de estar en agua y sal, vamos a colar, a tirar el agua y vamos a enjuagar nuevamente con agua hasta que el pescado quede libre de sal y se le quite la impureza. La idea es que con la sal y el agua, el pescado, toda la impureza que tiene se limpia y quede la carne blanda y lista para preparar. Tras terminado este procedimiento, incorporamos el limón, 
que está junto con el jugo de maracuyá y lo dejamos ahí el pescado con el limón reposando unos 20 minutos más y al momento le incorporamos la picadura. Podemos hacer antes la picadura o cuando ponemos el jugo de limón empezamos a picar la cebolla, el chile dulce, el culantro y se lo incorporamos. La idea es que primero el pescado esté un rato con los jugos, tanto el de maracuyá como el de limón, para que así se, se cocine bien y ya le ponemos los ingredientes, la picadura, sal, pimienta al gusto y un secreto para que el pescado se mantenga blando y con el color blanco fresco, ponemos un poquito de sparkling soda. Ponemos un poco de soda para que así cuando ya esté el ceviche hecho, le ponemos un poquito de soda y ya quedaría el ceviche listo. Lo dejamos reposar y lo ponemos a enfriar unas dos horas para posteriormente servirlo al gusto. Y buen provecho. Lo acompañamos con aguacate, jalapeño, chip, al gusto, como uno quiera servírselo. Y buen provecho. Compared to the normal ceviche. The ones you get out here normally. As good as the best Costa Rican ceviche. Yeah. Ugo ceviche. Actually, it's funny because I can I can taste the maracuyá. Even when I know there is two maracuyá on it. Hey, passion fruit, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Passion fruit. I cannot taste the passion fruit. The passion fruit is more similar to, to give it a perfect taste. Yeah. And it's a little sweeter. Well done. Good job. Perfect. Mmm. Perfect.